to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Everybody say Philadelphia. Philadelphia. In the U, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania. <laughs> but this church is in Philadelphia in Asia Minor. It's in present day Turkey. Not the big Mitchell Menno that you need, but Turkey, Turkey, the other country. It's there, somewhere there. And, and, just in case you're thinking that, oh, it's a letter to the church in Philadelphia. We're thinking massive. We're thinking parish church. We're thinking cathedral. That's Spanish, that thought. No, this is a home church. Everybody say home church. Home, home church. In our language, this is a feast life. Raise your hand if you attend the feast life. And those of you who, who do not have a feast, and maybe because you live far away, and, and there are feasts here in Cebu, and you cannot attend because you live far away, start a home church. Start a feast light. Ask one of our servants to guide you. And so this church in Philadelphia was a home church, and think 20 people, 30 people, maybe 40 people. And then verse 8 says, I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you. Everybody say, open the door for you. Open the door for you. That no one can close. My, my dear friends, um, just, just before I continue, just want to give you a little background. May I? You're still listening? Yes. The members of this small church, small home church, they met in its home church because they meet in a home, right? Like a feast like. And what, 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 happened, what happened in Philadelphia is that many of them were Jewish. Philadelphia is not in, in Israel, okay? It was in Asia Minor, it, it was in present day Turkey, it was far from Israel, um, 800 miles away. And so they migrated, the Jews migrated there, and they started believing in Jesus. But they were Jews, so this is what's happening. Saturday, they would attend their Jewish gatherings and uh, do Jewish rituals. And then on Sunday, they would attend their home church. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. Now, they were having problems. Ask me why. Because their friends, their family, their relatives were all Jews. And they looked down on these Christians. They were saying, hey, we're Jews. We've got the true religion. You've got Abraham. You've got Moses. We have the door. We already have the door. What are you doing dabbling with this Jesus stuff? And so they were being persecuted. And then here in the book of Revelation, Jesus is telling them, the church in Philadelphia, no, you have the open door because you have me. I am the door. You got that? Tell somebody inside you. Do you have Jesus? Do you have Jesus? Then you have the door. And then you have a door. You have the door to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. And then we, we read something. It says, you have little strength. Everybody feel that you are small. You feel that you are little. Jesus is telling you right now, right this moment, he is saying, even if you think you have little strength, I am your strength. And I will be with you. Do you understand me? We'll continue. Are you ready? And then it says here in verse 9, Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue. So these were the Jews who were persecuting them. Those who, liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. My dear friends, you know what the message is? Jesus is saying, are there people who are condemning you? Are there people who are judging you? Are there people who are gossiping about you? Are there people who are destroying your reputation? Listen to me. Jesus is saying, make them irrelevant to your life. Don't bother with them. I will vindicate you. So that no one will take away your crown. 
Everybody say, I have a crown. The word of God says you have a crown. Have you, do you know that you have a crown? You know what this crown is? Ask me what? It's not the one made of gold like a king's crown. The original Greek word for the crown here is a wreath made of olive leaves. It's given to the athlete that wins the competition. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you a crown. You have a crown. No one can take it away from you. Ask me why. Why? Louder. Why? Because Jesus, he had a crown of thorns. And he traded with a crown of victory. And that crown of victory, he gives it to you. And he says, that's yours. That's the crown of Jesus. Am I speaking to somebody here? And verse 12, this is a key passage that I want to preach to you today. Everybody say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Verse 12 says, all who are victorious will become pillars in the temple. Everybody say, pillars. Pillars. Pillars in the temple. And they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them, number one, the name of my God. And, number two, they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from God. And number three, and I will also write on them my new name. So, according to the book of Revelation, you are a pillar. Everybody put your hand over your chest and say, I'm a pillar. I'm a pillar. In the temple. In the temple. And then, and then the book of Revelation says, Jesus will write three things on you. God's name, the city of the new Jerusalem, number two, and his new name, whatever that means. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that you speak so loud. And so what did your husband tell you? If he says that to you, my dear women, what will he tell you? Up to date about the insurance company. It's a memorial plan. You know, no, women, wives, would want their husbands to be a little bit more regular. Yes or no? In expressing their love. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Daily if possible. You know, I've been married for so many years now. Last July, my wife and I celebrated 25 years together. And in front of a thousand people, we promised to be faithful and to love each other again. We said the same vows that we said 25 years ago. Question, were the, were the, did the vows expire? you? But we needed to express, I love you again, because it's for us. You promise, everybody say, you promise. You promise. Yeah. My dear friends, I've got good news for you. Ask me what? What? God, he loves expressing his love for you. Yes. So proud. Araw, araw. God is a God who says, I love you to you. The, the new promise, it's the old promise made new every morning. Do you understand? Lamentations chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. If you're singing this song, they are new every morning, new every morning. The love of God is re-expressed, and that's why. What is the new promise? Ask me, what is the new promise? What is the new promise? It's the old promise, made new every morning. It is God telling you, I love you. And the most, the greatest, most powerful expression of his love is the cross. It is always the cross. But every day he re-expresses and gives you a brand new, fresh declaration. I love you. When? Every time the sun rises, he says, I love you. 
Every time there's food on the table, he says, I love you. Every time there's a roof on your head, every time there's clothes on your back, and every time there's a child that smiles at you, and every time a friend embraces you, and every time there are people that you love around the dining table, and every time, think about it, every time you pray, every time you read the Bible, and especially every time the bread is broken in the Eucharist, Jesus is telling you, Because in verse 12, chapter 3, book of Revelation, Jesus says, And you are my pillars in God's temple. Everybody say, Pillar! Brother Go, what are you doing? Uli Tiko, put your hand over your chest. Everybody say, I'm God's pillar. I am God's pillar. Everybody say, I am a pillar. I'm a pillar. In God's house. In God's house. You don't know what you're talking about. Convince me. Because you said that you're not a pillar. Because you said that you're not a pillar. I am a pillar in God's house. Everybody say, I am a pillar in God's house. Parang hindi, brother Bo, hindi. Ikaw, brother Bo, ay naman nasa stage ka, nagpipreach ka. Yan, ikaw, pilar ni Lord. Ay, yung mga speakers kanina, si Stephen, si Risa, si Brother Ante, ay, mga pilar yan. Yung mga ibang leaders, ay, mga pilar, yung mga madre, yung katabi ko, mga pilar yan, yung pare, ay, mga pilar yan, ako. Ako? I'm a nobody, brother Bo. I'm a nobody. I've got news for you. I'm, I'm, I want you to listen carefully to what I'm about to say. Everybody say, I'm listening. I'm listening. God is telling you right now, you are not a decor in my house. You are not a trimming in my house. You are not an extra that I can throw away. No, no, no. You are not only important, you are essential. You are my pillar. You know what that means? Without you, my house collapses. Ganun ka ka-importante sa bahay ko. I repeat, this is what Jesus says. You are a pillar. There is nobody in the house of God that is a nobody. Jesus says, in my world and in my heart, you are a somebody. Because you are my pillar. Everybody say that. I'm a pillar. I'm a pillar. In God's house. In God's house. One more time. Tell somebody beside you. Pilar ka daw. 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 God needs us. God needs you. Every priest, pastor, and preacher, and theologian will tell you, Heresy! Heresy! God is God! He does not need anybody. The moment he needs something, he's no longer God. And yet, what I'm preaching to you, God needs you. Hindi mo naman yung kamay mo sa hindi mo. Alam ko makasalanan ka. Ako rin. Alam ko mahina ka. Ako rin. Alam ko marami yung pagkakamati. Ako rin. But this is the truth. God needs you. Rather go ahead and say, no. If God precisely because He is God chooses, decides to need you, God needs me. Yes. 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 You know, I, one of the things you can, the way to read the Bible, 
and we were, we were teaching this at the feast on a weekly basis. The way to understand the Bible is not to look at one verse, but to look at the other verses that may be connected to that. Hyperlinks, we call them. And so what I did was I searched through the Bible for any passage about pillars in God's temple. Do you know that there's only one passage? It's in the Old Testament. It's in 1 Kings. You want to read it together? To discover and understand more what Revelation 3 is all about. I'll read it for you. Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let go. 1 Kings chapter 7. Solomon also built a palace for himself, and it took him instruction. And then after that, he started building God's temple. Verse 15. Huram cast two. Let's read together. Huram cast two bronze pillars each. Read together. Twenty seven feet tall and eighteen feet in circumference. Okay, see you when you have a baby with a baby. I'm lucky, mom. Lucky, ma. It's a piece of the pillars of God. And you. And then it says here. I don't know how to do that. Purim set the pillars at the entrance of the temple, one toward the south and one toward the north. He named the one on the south, Jabin, and the one on the north, Boaz. Do you know, historians will tell you, this is rare, this is not common, naming the pillar, which makes the verse even Stranger, weird. And so, 1,400 years after this was written, the book of Revelation, the author, his name is John, he was in the island of Patmos, and he was reflecting on one king, wrestling with it, and then he was saying, Yung two pillars, may pangana. May pangana. And, and he, brought, he brought that into prayer, and then he began to reflect on it, and God spoke to him, and this is the message. Talaga naman yung mga pillar, may pangana. The beautiful. <laughs> the temple of God has been. Delicious. Difficult husbands. <laughs> difficult wives. <laughs> Make 
Study this between people who use luggages with wheels and luggages without wheels. People who use luggages with wheels are, are listen carefully, complain more about lower back pain, weaker legs. Why? Ask me why. Why? Wala nang burden. Ang dali na ng buhay. Pag hulong-hulong na nga. Pero pag mahirap ang buhay at kailangan kang galit ng 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, nagkakaroon ng muscle, yung arm, yung shoulders, yung lower back. Do you get what I'm saying? Nagkakaroon ng muscle na may legs. And so what happens, you become stronger because of the burdens of life. Comfort. Everybody, tell somebody beside you, comfort makes you weak. How many of you are serving the Lord in your family, in your house? How many of you do that? How many of you serve your parents? Wait a minute. You serve them. That's my hina. That's my hina. You can serve your wife and serve your husband. Parents, how many of you serve your kids? Raise your hand. Oh, yes, you do. How many of you serve in your jobs? Yes, be the best you can be. How many of you serve in the ministry? Raise your hand. Friends, friends, everything I just said, they're all burdens. They really are. Do you, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, if I want an easy life, if I want a more comfortable life, I'll just do one thing. Stop serving. I've been serving for 44 years in ministry. Do you know that these people at 100 years old, sumasabay ko ng kabayo? 
And you know, they, they say, Sweden was a river 100 years old. It's why? Do you know why? Many reasons, but I picked up one. Ask me one. Why? They do not live comfortable lives. They don't. They, they, they do the gardening, they carry stuff, they, they, they live in a village, na puro pataas. It's crazy. Tayo, gusto natin, laging comfortable, and that's why we become weak. You know what? I, I, I have, for, for a long time now, you know, I, I would have, many years ago, somebody gave me a chair. It was supposed to cure back pains. Do you know how much the chair is? It's so comfortable. Oh my gosh. Do you, know, you know how much the chair is? Ask me how much. They gave them to the army who did it. 120,000. During the time, 120,000 pesos. You see that. The sun see that. Claim to fame, it will cure your back pain. It did not. <laughs> Until I talked to a doctor, I don't know if I'm a doctor, na specialization of back pain. Do you know what chair will heal you? You want to know? You want to know? Yes. Ito. This. Brother Paul Allen Brigida. This. In Blue Zone's documentary in Netflix, the people of Okinawa are a high concentration of centenarians. You visit their houses, they have no chairs. What do you want? Sunday. And when you sit on the floor, you keep adjusting. You keep, you cannot adjust. You cannot, it's not comfortable. And so your muscles become stronger. And so, are you listening to what I'm saying? This is mind blown. Can you all stand up for me, please? Our problem is we are addicted to comfort. And because we are addicted, muscles have become weak. Our spiritual muscles have become weak. My dear friends, I want you to tell us about your sight. Sometimes. 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 You have to embrace pain. You have to embrace pain. You have to embrace burdens. You have to embrace burdens. To become stronger. To become stronger. Am I preaching to somebody in the house? Yeah. Everybody say, I'm a pillar. I'm a pillar. In God's house. In God's house. And God is making me strong. God is bringing me strong. Through the burdens of my life. Through the burdens of my life. And then it says something very mysterious. The book of Revelation, we just read it a while ago. If you're a pillar, was I a little bit? This is, this is wild. So wild. It says, verse 12. Are we flashing it again? Verse 12. All who are victorious will become pillars in my temple, the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave. And I will write on them, this is the of the Lord, Three things. The name of God, the name of the new Jerusalem, and his new name. The first two, a little bit easy to understand. By the way, this is common. And of all one, in ancient times, they would write the name of their deity on pillars. They do that often. But in the book of Revelation, the difference is this. It is Jesus himself who will write, number one, the name of God on you. Number two, the name of the new Jerusalem on you. The moment you get it, the moment you get it, I want you to say hallelujah, okay? Jesus says, you're my pillar, and I'm going to write, number one, the name of my God, the name of the Father. And number two, the new Jerusalem. Do you know why? Ask me why. Are you sure? Yes. You want to know? Yes. <laughs> Are you sure you want to know? Yes. Are you sure?
Father's name. Name of the new city, Jerusalem. And number three, Jesus said, I will write my new name. My new name. What is that? For the last 2,000 years, Bible scholars have not been able to solve it. Have not been able to crack the code. They don't know. You ask any theologian, you ask any scholar, they do not know. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Why? There are times you want to live with mystery. It's okay that not, not every question is answered. Because here's the thing, that's what faith is. What does it mean that Jesus will write his new name on you? I'll tell you, my guess, maybe the name of Jesus, just maybe, I don't know. But my guess is the name of Jesus is, is the Jesus that walked on the face of the earth. But Jesus, the glorified Jesus, will have a new name that our minds cannot comprehend. Our brain cells are not enough to understand or fathom the new name that Jesus will have. But that's okay. I can live with mystery. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus says, I have already written my new name in you. What does that mean? Whatever future that has that I do not understand, that I do not fathom, I'm already in it. I belong to God. Not just belong to God. I belong to God forever.
But you gave it your own. And you know what Alan told me? And I, I live by the same mantra. Brother Bo, how can I hide? There is no other way to live. He, he said that. There is no other way to live but to give your all. Even when it is difficult to give it, you give it your all. And when you give it your all, you become stronger. And that's what a pillar is. All my dear friends, I want you to put your arms around somebody today and just tell that person you belong.